Hello everybody, I'm Tara and today we're going to talk about five NaNoWriMo success stories. If you have no idea what I just said, it's probably your first time on my channel because I've been talking about NaNoWriMo for a while now. NaNoWriMo is a National Novel Writing Month. It challenges participants to write a 50,000 word novel in one month namely the month of November. We are right smack in the middle of it right now, so I thought today, what better way to give you guys some motivation, what better way to give myself some motivation than to talk about NaNoWriMo success stories. NaNoWriMo naysayers claim that you can't write a good book in a month. And they're right. If you go into NaNoWriMo expecting to come out of it with something that you can ship off to publishers, you're gonna be disappointed. First drafts suck. Whether you write them in a month or a year, first draft suck. But you can take that first draft beyond NaNoWriMo. You can take those 50,000 words that you just dumped onto a page and you can revise them. You can cut a bunch of them and add a bunch more. You can polish it up into a second draft and a third draft and a fourth draft until it is something that you can send off to publishers and maybe even get published. That is exactly what these five authors did and now you can find their NaNoWriMo novels in most bookstores and maybe even on your own bookshelf. Let's kick things off with a book that is very well known and very well loved here on Booktube, The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. The Night Circus is a historical fantasy set against the backdrop of a dark and eerie and magical circus that was created by Celia and Marco, who are two young magicians pitted against each other in a battle to prove whose magic is stronger. A battle in which only one can be left standing. The Night Circus actually started as an entirely different story in NaNoWriMo 2005, but Erin Morgenstern got bored with that story, and instead of just throwing in the towel, she decided to do something spontaneous and fun, and she took her characters to the circus. And she ended up loving that trip to the circus way more than the novel she'd been writing all along, so she took it and she ran with it, and she developed it over the next two NaNoWriMo's into what we know now as The Night Circus. The book was published by Doubleday in September 2011, and it hit the New York Times bestsellers list the very next month, and has since become something of a cult classic in the world of literature. Here's a quote from the pep talk that Erin Morgenstern did for NaNoWriMo in 2011. Even if you're an outliner, leave room for the unexpected things to sneak in. Surprises are are half the fun, those spontaneous road trips through tangents and subplots, they might just end up being more important than you think. Next up is another book set in a circus. Maybe my next book should be set in a circus. Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen. This circus is one struggling to survive in the Great Depression, making one night stands in town after endless town. The story follows Jacob, a newcomer to the circus, as he meets and falls in love with Marlena, the circus's beautiful and married young star and Rosie, the elephant that seems untrainable until Jacob figures out a way to reach her. He doesn't fall in love with the elephant. I feel like I need to make that clear. Sarah Gruen already had two published novels under her belt when she started writing Water for Elephants for NaNoWriMo, and once the story was finished, it was turned down by her publisher, so that forced her to find a new one. And that new one was Algonquin Books, who published Water for Elephants in May of 2006. It hit the number one spot on the New York Times bestsellers list in July 2007 and spent a total of four years as a New York Times bestseller. It was also made into a major motion picture starring Reese Witherspoon and Robert Pattinson in 2011, making this the most commercially successful NaNoWriMo novel to date. And a quote from Sarah Gruen's NaNoWriMo pep talk in 2007. Today I'm going to jump around and write only the fun bits, and whenever one of those scenes starts winding down, I'm going to ditch it without so much as a sayonara and look for the next fun scene. Look for that next fun scene, and then the next. And if that doesn't work, set someone on fire. In your book, of course. Our third NaNoWriMo success story is Wool by Hugh Howey. Wool is a dystopian sci-fi set in a post-apocalyptic Earth where the surface has become uninhabitable. What's left of humanity is surviving underground in a silo that is ruled by a totalitarian government and all the rules and regulations meant to protect them, until the sheriff that has upheld the silo's rules for years breaks the greatest one of all and asks to go outside. Hugh Howey was a three-time NaNoWriMo winner and a self-published author when, in October of 2011, his novella Wool started racking up sales and requests for more. So he abandoned the plot that he had planned to write for NaNoWriMo that year and worked on expanding the world of wool instead. By the end of that November, not only had he finished three more novellas in the wool series, but he had edited the second installment and published it on Amazon. By the following January, the wool omnibus was complete with five stories and 160,000 words, about half of which was written during NaNoWriMo. Hugh Howey digitally self-published the complete book, and by that summer he was selling 20 to 30,000 copies 
a month. He eventually landed a six-figure book deal with Simon & Schuster, who published the Wool Omnibus in print in March of 2013, and since then it has cracked the top 20 of the New York Times bestsellers list. And here's a quote by Hugh Howey's NaNoWriMo blog post in 2013. I can say with confidence that I wouldn't have written the same books if I'd written them any other way. The compressed nature of a nano novel makes for a tighter plot. It reinforces the importance of not taking a day off. NaNoWriMo isn't a writing exercise for me. It trained me to be a pro. And next up we have another book that is very well loved here on booktube, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Fangirl is a contemporary YA novel about a girl named Kath who is struggling to adjust to her new life at college where she has become estranged from the twin sister who's always been her best friend and she's trying to complete the epic Simon Snow fanfic that she's been working on for years while facing the question of whether or not writing fanfic is truly writing. Like Sarah Gruen, Rainbow Rowell had already published two novels by the time she started writing Fangirl for NaNoWriMo. She had been very skeptical about NaNoWriMo, thinking that there was no way you could write a good book in a month, but she decided to give it a go to fast track the drafting process that she hated, figuring if she'd wasted a month, it was only a month. But that month? was definitely not a waste. She hit the 50,000 word mark that November but didn't actually finish the draft until the following January and she revised it that spring. Fangirl was published by St. Martin's Press in September 2013 and it hit the New York Times bestsellers list at that very month. And Carry On, the fanfic that Kath writes throughout Fangirl, became a novel in and of itself. So you could say that Rainbow Rowell started two of her novels in NaNoWriMo that year. And a quote from her NaNoWriMo pep talk from 2013. That 50,000 word pile I made wasn't a mess at all. It's some of the bravest writing I've ever done. NaNoWriMo helped me push past so many of my doubts and insecurities and bad habits, and I think that's partly why I love Fangirl so much now, because I remember how swept away I felt when I was writing it. And last but not least, my personal favorite NaNoWriMo success story, the entire Lunar Chronicles series by Marissa Meyer. If you somehow don't know what the Lunar Chronicles are about, it is a collection of sci-fi retellings of classic fairy tales, Cinderella, Little Red Riding Hood, Rapunzel, and Snow White. Back in 2008, Marissa Meyer participated not only in NaNoWriMo, but in a contest in her home state that would give the person who wrote the most words that NaNoWriMo a walk on roll in Star Trek. Sadly, she did not win the contest, but she did win NaNoWriMo with 150,000 words and three first drafts, Cinder, Scarlet, and Cress which she completely scrapped and rewrote from scratch over the next few years. Cinder eventually became Marissa Meyer's debut novel and the start of an amazing series. It was published by Macmillan Publishers in January of 2012 and it hit the New York Times bestsellers list just a few weeks later. Marissa Meyer has continued to do NaNoWriMo almost every year since and she's drafted most of her novels during NaNoWriMo. She wrote Heartless in 2012, Ferris in 2013, what eventually became Renegades in 2014, and this year she is working on the third book in the Renegades trilogy, and she's not doing too badly with it. As a writer who's done most of her work during NaNoWriMo and who hopes to someday publish a novel that got its start with NaNoWriMo, Marissa Meyer is not only one of my favorite authors, but she's pretty much my hero. And a quote from her 2013 NaNoWriMo pep talk. Sometimes inspiration eludes us. No one looks forward to those lulls in the writing process, but they are natural and they can be overcome. These are the times when we must proceed on willpower and caffeine and the unflappable confidence that each word we write is one word closer to a finished novel. Tough as those times may be, they often lead to some of our most proud and beautiful writing moments. So there are five NaNoWriMo success stories. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty motivated to keep plugging away at my NaNoWriMo novel. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and if you did, did you know they were NaNoWriMo novels? And if not, now that you do, are you looking at them in a whole different light? And if you were skeptical about NaNoWriMo before, has this convinced you that it is worth a try? Thank you so much for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, give it a big thumbs up. And until next time, happy reading and happy writing. Bye bye.